Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG HOA Ham. What a great time to be alive as an amateur radio operator. We have so many options available to us from HTs to HF rigs to antenna systems and of course to power solutions as well and in specific batteries and that's the topic of today. Talent Cell has been around for a while and today we're going to get a look at the PB120B1. It's a 9 volt to 12.6 volt solution for us. It comes in at up to 6 amps if we need that much power and of course for our QRP rigs which we would use this with that's not at all what we're going to need. I asked Talent Cell for this one in particular because I wanted something a little bit larger than the basic and I almost wish now that I went back to the smaller unit that so many other ham radio operators have used with QRP rigs but we'll talk about that a little bit later it's very well packaged in the box meaning it's protected with all kinds of foam form fit packaging so this unit will ship well you don't have to worry about damage comes with a power uh, adapter a accessory plug and a very basic instruction manual I'm no stranger to talking about all the options we have to power up our many radios available to us. But before we talk about the specifics of the talent cell and get it on the CBA and test it against its manufacturer's rated capacity, let's get a high level understanding of what it is. The least expensive power solution here would be the VRK. And this is a USB-A and USB-C device that you would normally look at and think that's to charge my phone and maybe my camera. It also does have an output of 12 volts, so you can use this with a QRP rig. The most expensive item here is the Shark Geek Storm 2. It's also the coolest of them all. So in addition to looking incredibly awesome and attracting attention anytime you bring it out onto a workbench, it has a user selectable voltage on the DC barrel output, as well as three USB devices that could be run simultaneous with running a QRP rig. So that's the draw of this. It's incredibly versatile in all the devices that it can run simultaneously. Again, it doesn't have infinite power, meaning it can't run all of those devices forever, but if you were doing a short activation, you wanted to have a phone operational at the same time, you were trying to run a tablet, you were trying to run a camera, you can run or charge multiple devices off of it at the same time. Of course, BioNO, we all know it as the standard for ham radio. And if we were running a QRO rig, we, we all know what we would be using out there, right? We would be taking a LifePo battery and that's what would be running our rigs. Well, we also run our QRP rigs with radios like this and can run them for extended periods of time. The limitation of batteries like this would be if you want to operate something like a camera or a phone, or you wanted to charge something via USB, you need to put some type of adapter on here to get to the right voltage to be able to operate that gear. We don't question its functionality when it comes to amateur radio, it's just it's very singularly focused. The talent cell kind of strikes a balance of all of these in that it is far less expensive than the Shar Geek. It certainly brings more power than the Verk, and it's more versatile than the BioNO. Now, it doesn't have the capacity of the BioNO, but with this device, you do have the ability to operate a 12 volt radio in the barrel out, the DC barrel output, as well as operate something with a USB requirement. So that's the draw of the device like this. It's not as powerful as the BioNO, meaning size and output and duration. It's not as flexible as the Shargeek. It's also not as expensive. It does have more power than the Verk. So it kind of falls somewhere in between these units for power output, cost, and functionality. Let's get it on the CBA and see if we match what the manufacturer has stated its capacity is, and then we'll talk more about its use case and how we would use it. With our CBA all set up, we're going to turn on the battery so we can get the connection and start the drawdown test and confirm the manufacturer's statement regarding capacity. We'll take one final look at our CBA setup to test this lithium ion battery that has a rated voltage of 12.8 amp hours at 11.1 .1 volts. It is a 12 volt battery for ham radio, 
battery manufacturers seem to want to confuse the living daylights out of us. I guess I need to go to school and get that engineering degree after all. We're going to draw this down at 2 amps. Let's go ahead and give it a start. And here we go. So I'll be back with you shortly once we get our results. As I've already mentioned, I asked TalentCell for this battery specifically to review, and perhaps at the time I was thinking of it in relation to my IC705. But they do have many various sizes available, and when you navigate to their page from the link I'll leave in the description below, you can certainly find many different options and sizes and capacities to meet the needs specifically to your use case. I thought I would demonstrate for you very quickly just a size comparison to radios that we're familiar with. Most of us are familiar with an IC705. Uh, most of us or many of us are familiar with the FX4CR. Not all of us have that. I'm one of the few perhaps that is fortunate enough to have this awesome little radio. Let me just stand them up on end as well so you can see from this perspective a size comparison as well. So it's not overly beefy at all. As a matter of fact, it's smaller than an IC705, but they also do make versions of this that would actually match up to the size of an FX4CR. So maybe that's something that would be more suitable to your particular needs. A couple of things to point out to interpret the results. In the CBA, you can put a cutoff point where the CBA will stop drawing against the battery to protect it. I didn't do that with this battery. I just let the battery BMS make sure that it took care of itself and it did. Another thing to notice would be the decrease of voltage over the period of discharge, which happened to be six hours and 39 minutes. With lithium ion batteries, it tends to be a gentle slope over a period of time. With lithium iron phosphate, it tends to be very steady voltage until the very end and then it drops off. Lithium iron phosphate are what we use with our QRO rigs. For our QRP rigs, lithium iron phosphate is fantastic and lithium ion is also suitable. Bottom line, the battery delivered 13.291 amp hours compared to its 12.8 rating or 104% and 138.228 versus 142.08 watt hour capacity rating or 97%. It's a pass in my opinion. I can't think of a better device to demonstrate the battery than the FX4CR. Before we turn on the power to the transceiver, we're showing 12.18 volts on the meter and 0.05 amps. Once we turn it on, we are drawing 0.24 amps receive only. And once we find a clear frequency, we'll just do a test transmission. And you're going to see the amp draw fluctuate with my voice. Of course, that's the nature of single sideband. And the max we hit is 1.36. What I want you to think about is that in transmission, the max I pulled was 1.36. Receive only, we were pulling 0.24 amps. When I was doing the drawdown on the battery, I drew it down at two amps, a consistent draw of two amps, and that took, what, more than six and a half hours to pull it down. Meaning if you're using this with a QRP rig, it's going to outlast you. Guaranteed there's an operator somewhere right now using a Talent Cell battery to power their QRP rig. Thanks Talent Cell for providing this unit to me for my test use and review, and so I can share it with the ham community. If you found this useful friend, feel free to look at the links in the description below. It'll take you to the Talent Cell website, and perhaps there's something there that would make your operating easier. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.